The discovery of hundreds of unmarked graves confirms what members of Calais' First Nation have known for decades. The Roman Catholic Residential School has impacted us intensely. We are not asking for pity, but we are asking for understanding. We need time to heal, and this country must stand by us. Investigators have used ground-penetrating radar to carry out their grim search. It detected 751 unique radar hits below ground, and while there is a margin of error, the chief says it's confirmation of more than 600 unmarked graves near the former Maryvale Residential School. We want to make sure when we tell our story that we're not trying to make numbers sound bigger than they are. Chief Cadmus DeLorme says it's not a mass grave. At one point, there were individual markers at the burial sites, but Catholic Church officials removed them in the 1960s. DeLorme says that was illegal, and the site is now being treated like a crime scene. Another chief representing 74 First Nations in Saskatchewan says residential schools were Canada's concentration camps, the sites of crimes against humanity. An assault on, a first, on first Nation people. We are proud people. The only crime we ever committed as children was being born Indigenous. Barry Kennedy remembers being an altar boy at the Maryvale Indian Residential School and burying a deceased child. We buried him out behind the back of the church. He says school officials inflicted sexual violence upon students and one of his classmates disappeared in the night. He heard them begging for help, right? Uh, no one would ever go and help. Everybody was always too scared. And, uh, and Brian was one of those individuals and just he never returned. The Pope needs to apologize for what has happened to the Maryville Residential School. The Archbishop of Regina offered an apology of his own Thursday, pledging to turn the sentiment into meaningful and concrete action. Today's findings just shows the absolute urgency of uh, of that work, the need to do everything we can to support uh, Calasis and other Indigenous communities. Leaders say this is just the first phase of what will be a process that takes years to see through. This is phase one. Uh, we're going to identify all the names we can uh, using all the records. Uh, we will put um, a headstone and a name to, to each of them. Permanent reminders of the horrific legacy of residential schools that Canada will be forced to confront with each future discovery of unmarked graves. Ryan Kessler, Global News, Saskatoon. According to a 2017 University of Regina report, there are more than 21,000 residential school survivors in Saskatchewan. The former Maryville School was for First Nations children in southeastern Saskatchewan and southwestern Manitoba. It opened in 1899 and was run by the Roman Catholic Church. According to the University of Regina, the federal government assumed responsibility for it in 1968. In 1981, the Cowessus First Nation took control and the school closed in 1997. Two years later, it was demolished, but the church and the cemetery are still there. Beside that cemetery is where the unmarked graves were discovered. There were about 140 other residential schools in Canada. To call them schools is actually a misnomer. Indigenous children were robbed of their language, their culture, and their family connections. There was malnutrition and physical and sexual abuse. And the lack of information about missing children and accountability for what happened persists to this day. As Eric Sorensen reports, the path to reconciliation remains a long one. Just days before Canada Day, a dark and inexorable truth is unfolding in this country. Burial sites in Saskatchewan and British Columbia may be just the first of dozens still to be uncovered. St. Anne's was a residential school in Ontario. Evelyn Corkmaz, a survivor. I expect them to find bodies buried. Uh, it, it would not surprise me at all. This is what residential school people have been saying for years, but no one has been listening. What happened at residential schools is not new to the powerful in this country. In 1907, Cindy Blackstock's organization runs walking tours in Ottawa. One landmark is the building where the chief medical officer, Peter Bryce, first brought to light inspections of residential schools more than a hundred years ago for the Department of Indian Affairs. He catalogued the horrors of children dying in high numbers. He called it a national crime. 
and he was ignored, and children continued to die at residential schools. How many of those deaths could have been prevented had Canada listened to the advice of their own chief health medical health officer in 1907? He was the whistleblower that never was listened to. The harm, she says, is still evident today in perpetually poor housing and unclean drinking water. It's not historical. It's playing out right now. It's not enough for the government to say sorry. They have to change their behavior. For many Indigenous people, Canadians are only beginning to recognize the trauma that still needs to be addressed. Let's have a discussion so that we can move towards healing because right now, we're not near healing if we can't even talk about the truth of the genocide that's happened in Canada. The chief of the Cowessis Nation says he wants a different future for his child. In Canada one day, hopefully when my four-year-old is old, we'll have reconciliation through and through, through the spirit and intent. It's been a heavy burden for children like Evelyn Korkmaz to carry for the rest of their lives. No more promises, no more words. We need concrete action now. There are calls for the records of every residential school to be made public, a painful reckoning that is just beginning. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.